the House Civis Broadcasting. Hello, my name is Luffy Haskell de Civis. And I'm your other host, Silas de Civis. And today is the 6th of Nim. And it is the host forsaken, hottest day I have ever encountered in all of my years. It is so unbearable. And we were supposed to have someone come in and cast endure elements on us. And it was going to be a nice afternoon. But someone decided to pay them more money than we could, which is ridiculous. This whole thing is ridiculous. It is all about pulling strings. And I'm not paying them. I'm not. I'm not paying Silas, for this. Silas, non- no, this Silas. is ridiculous. And this is it's robbery is what it is. Silas, it is robbery. Are, do you know how many people in Lower Sharn can't even afford endure elements right now? Yes, but how many of them are integral to the city and the city's... We're not just some people. We are here doing a thing for the city, a service for the city. We deserve a little bit more respect than to be strong-armed into this. I'm not going to fight you on this right now, Silas, but I just want you to know you sound like a bit of an asshole. Well, I mean, that's fine. I will be a bit of one as long as it gets us what we need. Plain and simple. Someone here has to be the actual force behind it, rather than just nice all the time to people. Because how did that work out? Did the petting zoo send along some sort of heat-absorbing animal? I don't believe they did. No, because no animal exists. Right now they're focusing on keeping all of the animals, you know, happy and healthy. I don't expect them to hand me everything on a silver platter, Silas. I didn't expect a silver platter. All I wanted to do was pay a fair market price for what I was entitled to. I'm not paying more than that. This is If we want to start talking market price, I mean, technically, uh, your fair market price is extremely below what the actual, uh, you know, payment for the service should be because of how high demand is. Do we want to start talking about economics? Because I took... Three years of economics at the 12th. Let's just get this travesty over with, shall we? Let's move along for today because I'm already tired of it. Today we're going to be talking about a handful of different news, uh, fun things, I suppose. And we've got a couple of Aloofies asked. And then, of course, we have a special guest who's running to be the newest representative from Middle North Edge against Doran Cantor, our old friend... Xander Johns, and he's here to talk to us today about that, so we unfortunately have to allow him. Ear. I don't care. He's gonna bring it up later. I don't care. He can bring it up. Okay, you get to you get to be the one that gets sued for that. How can we get sued? We're House Civis, right? I mean, yeah, but they can sue us. The implication there is that somehow we control all of the lawyers and that judges would decide for us. That's not the way that works. No, you're right. I'm sorry. It's just so hot. Anyway, we hope you can struggle through this. A Chronicle Chronicle of of Echoes. Echoes. That was not good. That was not on. No. No. You know what? I hope that they are. I hope everyone's relaxing in a tavern somewhere. Maybe they have ice. Nice cold beer. I could, I could really, you, know, you know, I could go for a cup of hot tea because it would be cooler than the air around us. I don't disagree with that one. Got a bit of news today. Nothing too good, unfortunately. 
It's just the city. I have heard other places are like Rote is not. It's not like this yeah, right now. Even no. just outside the city, it is just unbearable here. It's just I can't. Way too hot. Just. Way too hot. Do you want to go ahead and uh, do one of the newses? Yeah. Um. So this one comes from on Dare. Um. A guerrilla group operating on the border of Ondare and the Eldine Reaches, known as the Eldine Wolves, have captured a bunch of archaeologists and porters and laborers from the University of Wynarn. Ondarian forces have been dealing with the Eldine Wolves for some time, but recently the wolves seem to be increasing the aggression and volatility of their attacks. The Eldine Wolves have demanded that for the safe return of the Wynarn expedition, all Ondarian forces would need to pull out of the Wynarn River Valley. Queen Aurelia's diplomatic corps have said that the Crown will never negotiate with kidnappers and terrorists. Yeah, they'd have to negotiate with themselves. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, shit. Uh... (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Kyber. The residents of Ondare are insisting that they will always oppose the Eldine Wolves, regardless of their tactics. Lord Haran Ir Trellick, whose family has presided over these parts of the Wynarn River Valley, said that pulling out would cost on dare many prosperous farms and, quote, that the land is on dare soil, and I've already given five sons to make sure. <laughs> that it stays on their soil. It is nice to know that they have their own Xander Johns because let me tell you, I'm so terrible. happy that all of my children died. Yeah, it's <laughs> how how awful is it that we're dealing with that, and then Undare is dealing with that. I I don't like Undare, but I would hate to have to deal with that nonsense. Mm, Car- Carnath, do you think Carnath is having trouble with the Morholds? No. No, you don't no. think so? No one, no delegates from there are just screaming that about That was it. entirely, like, peaceful, though. My, Wasn't my, it? My dead family's been living there for 30 years. No, nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> just because it was peaceful doesn't mean that everyone's going to get along with the idea. Let's be honest. There are just terrible people everywhere. All right, let's let's get on to the next news. I don't I don't want to keep doing this all day. Go ahead. Last far, packs of guerrillians rage through the Stone Yard district of Lower North Edge. That's two gorillas. Is that were we going for like a joke there? Guerrillians and gorillas. No, because when we like chose it's, these it's, articles, I think we were probably in better spirits. Because <laughs> it's. Gorillas like the warfare, and gorillians like the four-armed monster. You know, I knew that, but in my head, I thought that maybe the Eldine Reaches could be gorilla gorillas. <laughs> but it just, it seemed like it, it was a possibility. That's bad. That's really bad. That's not good. <sighs> so, uh, 13 are dead, are missing. Dozens more were wounded. City Watch officials reported that more than two dozen of these creatures have been captured or killed in an effort to restore peace to the neighborhood. You know, we should ask him about that. He's he's running for council. Let's find out what he wants to do about these guerrillians. Today, soldiers are conducting door-to-door searches of the entire district to round up the remaining guerrillians as well as find the origin of these creatures. Eyewitnesses say that they descended from ledges near the farmer's market of Green Coin Street, before spreading out through the entire district. Many report the gruesome violence of these beasts. Details I will not share with you here, because they are not pretty. 
Several residents also cited the bravery of the druid known as Teln, who healed many wounded and drove off numerous Karoyans. The Watch does not know the whereabouts and counts them among the missing. Rannoch Plantheker. That's a hard name. Plathiker? Plathiker. Rannoch Plathiker. That is a tough one. No, I'm sorry. That I is, feel yeah. so bad. Professor of Cryptozoology at Morgrave University said that the actions and amount of gorillians in the Shifter community was odd, as these creatures rarely live in packs more than six and typically eat their prey immediately, let alone this tropical forest forearmed and territorial primate being in Sharn to begin with. Yeah, I don't even think that, like, the the zoo has gorillians, because they're just I really saw mean. one once. I don't remember where. It was a stuffed one. That's where it was. But they are big. They are, and, like, their hands are way more clawed than you would think. I was going to make a joke about stuff, and I was going to ask them, like, what they'd eaten, but that seemed a bit too easy. Yeah. I, I think it was a bad taste. <laughs> All right, let's roll it along here. We're almost done. All righty. This one comes from Morgrave University. Morgrave University's Dezina Museum of Antiquities is putting maps from the infamous Valtro the Mad on display next week. Valtro was a dwarf, wizard, and prospector who mined for kyber dragon shards in the 400s YK. The university is putting these maps on display not only due to their painstaking detail and art, but because of the various codes, references, and magical obfuscations. Such common details, such as south always being up, and all drawn compasses pointing south, and astronomical charts superimposed over underground caves, as well as rare magical pigments that continue to be vibrant even these 500 years later. Valtreau was also known for his infamous journals, which while having simple writing such as children's stories, are covered in numerical ciphers, allegorical tales, and cryptic references. Arak Janira, cartography professor emeritus at the university, who had offered several maps from his own private collection, said that calling Vetro mad is cruel, in that just because we don't understand his writing doesn't mean his mind wasn't in perfect order. I'm really excited about this. I'm hoping the maps don't catch fire because of just... Oh no, they have all of that under control. They've been keeping everything temperature controlled there, which is probably why they're putting everything out, is now people are coming, and now they've got a bunch of eyes on stuff. Maybe, who knows, maybe some kid out there will look at it and say, oh, I understand, because mad or no, he was uh, a bit of an eccentric. It's, re it's really weird, because, so, like, not a lot of, like, copies of his journals were published. But they were published, you know? But they're just like, they're they're like a collector's item now. I mean, maybe. I, I, I don't get it. It seems to me that there was a brilliant mind there, and then as it deteriorated, it ruined all of the good and all of the beauty that was in it. just became a mess. All right, let's uh, jump over to these Alufi's Asks, then we can get through this and then look forward to next week's broadcasting, because today, we ain't got it. I really hope that it gets cooler soon. What's the first question, Silas? Dear Ask Alufi, which is not how any of this is phrased. I don't know why you're doing Just that. Just read it. I heard a while back that you wanted tales from adventurers. A barmy old lady near Fallen gave me one whole silver sovereign to kill the neighbor's really loud cat. Am I an adventurer <laughs> now? Dear, I'm sorry, dear Lee, curiosity. You know what? Uh, enjoy. 
That is absolutely horrible. No. You shouldn't kill a cat unless it's really sick or really hurt or really mean or trying to kill you. That list got longer than I expected (laughs) really quickly. Uh, It was just, you shouldn't kill a cat. And then, yeah, caveats. Listen, my dad, my dad's an adventurer. So I know sometimes you'll be walking up and you're like, oh, a cute little kitty. And all of a sudden the kitty goes, yow. And then tries to kill you. Like, it happens. Has your dad killed a lot of cats? No. It feels like your dad has killed some cats. I think we need to talk. My dad has not killed a lot of cats. I don't even know if my dad's killed any cats. I just know how this whole thing goes. Killing um a creature for money doesn't make you an adventurer. It makes you a poacher. Poachers are bad. Adventurers don't poach animals. They poach treasure. From extinct cultures. So what you're saying is if the cat had had gold, it would have been fine? No. I'm sorry, if the cat had an artifact, it would have been fine? Yes. I don't I don't think you understand what it is to be an adventurer at all. I, I think sure that you need do. to stop hanging around with the Clifftop side guild group. It's the next one, Silas. Uh, right, uh, dear Luffy, since last far, I received several pictures per letter of giant purple worms. What can I do to make them stop? A distressed fan of the echoers. Oh, oh no. Uh, so this is what's called a post worm. You can get them via, you know, house service mail. It happens. Um, so there's a few things you can do. Um, you can report it to House Civis and we'll try and make it stop. Not us, the, the other, the, yeah, the, the other, other guys, guild, yeah. the other guys. Or, um. I mean, we could try on, hey, stop, don't send them worms. Or, what you you could also do is you could follow the worm trail. It could be an adventure. Some weirdo is sending this poor person worms. I'm sending multiple people around the city worms. Stop the worms. Follow the worm trail. That is terrible advice. You are not good at advice. Listen, I'm really hot, okay? This question deserves so much more attention than I have right now. But I can feel sweat sweating through my sweat right now, and none of it's evaporating. Well, let's get to the other half of everything, and then we can take a little interlude break. Let's, uh, dear Luffy, enclosed you will find a green and gray painted glidewing claw. We hope that you will cast your support for the Glidewing at the race this year. In fact, we are betting that Silas will collect a, on a Glidewing wager this season. See you at the finish line. Sincerely, Little Clawfoot. <laughs> no, I'm not betting on the Glidewing. I've got good money on the Gargoyle this year. I've got money in on that. <laughs> Kerlac is uh, Kerlac's going to win. I'm going to take. I'm gonna put it right here. Why? Because it's a gift, Silas. And also, they're hoping that the Glidewing wins. And I hope that the Owl wins. But maybe the Glidewing will win. And then they'll see that I'm wearing this little Glidefoot claw. And they'll be like, thank you, Aloofy. You're hedging your bets. You're trying to make it so that way no matter who wins, you win. <laughs> you can't ride the fence. You have to show support to one or the other. I support all of them. I'm a supporter of the race, not of the people. I've heard you support the people of the race. No, oh, they support me. <laughs> all right, let's take a couple of minutes and bring in our esteemed guest. You said asshole wrong.
Welcome back. As we said at the top, we have Lord Xandir Ear Johns with us in the studio today. Uh, my lord, how are you doing? I'm doing quite well. Unlike the rest of the city, it seems I've been able to maintain my cool during these trying times. You know, I had noticed, I assumed that Endure Elements, I'm going to take a guess and say you probably had an Endure Elements, because I can tell your hair, the way it's sitting, it's not stringy and sticky and gross. Uh, I'm going to take a guess that that's probably why. Well, that, that is quite right. I did happen to have that cast for me earlier today, and I feel wonderful. But before then, I was maintaining, let's be honest. This city has gotten a little overheated in its rhetoric and some of its actions, and I was doing well before then. And I'm excited to come in and talk to you about the future and how we are going to change this city for the better. Well, I know that we are all very excited to hear about your ideas for policy change. Well, it's not just me. There are quite a few people pushing to change the counselors of this city. Because let's be honest, this city is corrupt from the top down. You know, i that is a sentiment I have to uh, agree with entirely. I feel that a lot of the... Uh, families in power um, believe that for some reason any decisions they make uh, are the best. Well, I couldn't agree more on that. I feel like we need to, instead of making these decisions with these high-class families deciding everything for our citizens, we should have our citizens speaking out and reaching out and trying to change things. And that is why I am running for city council. And what district are you running for? I am running for Middle North Edge against that snake, Doran Cantor. And, um, please tell me, um, Middle North Edge is a, um, well, well you, you've got Holdfast, you've got High Hope, you've got Oak Ridge, right? Um, so that is at least one predominantly dwarven area. Uh, do you think that you can hold with the uh, typical cultural ideals of a dwarven leader? We have opened up our campaign office, not in Holdfast, uh, which we don't plan on holding, but in High Hope, because we are seeking divine intervention in this upcoming election. We want people to come out and say they have had enough of these charlatans, these phonies, running the city. As we all know, Cantor claims to be a devout follower of Baldry, but there is no doubt in my mind that he is a worshipper of the Six. So you have no plans uh, for the people of Holdfast? I have no plans for the people of Holdfast because I have no plans for anyone in this city. I want everyone in this city to make their own plans, to decide their own futures. I'm not going to be some bureaucrat pushing things around and telling them how to live. Why would I tell Holdfast who it can and cannot be? And you seem particularly interested in Holdfast. Why are we not talking about Oak Bridge? Why are we not talking about the residents there? Why are you trying to cater to one specific group rather than remembering that it is an entire district full of people all living their lives? You're right. I hadn't gotten to ask about Oak Bridge yet. Now, that is a an average residential area. As a nobleman, how do you think you can affect those people's lives in a positive way? Because I have the foresight and vision to know what it is to be powerful in this city, to be well off, and the only way that they will achieve that is through me. I Let's see. be honest. We, we don't need someone who doesn't know how to manage money in charge of things in this city. I would just like to point out what an anathema that is to the general uh, Braillish outlook that anyone can be great. However, I do commend you on the fact that you think that because you were born into a family, that means that you know how to lead. Well, Regardless, I'm just taking a page out of your book, Mr. Civis. 
Here you are in your tower preaching to all of the citizens of this city, telling them who they can and cannot be, all the while pushing your civis agenda. Everything is based on the Dragon Mark houses. You are trying to push their businesses and make them stronger, all while telling Brelish citizens that they cannot be themselves, that they have to conform to some ideals that you've put forth. Statistically, we have supported more non-Dragon Marked house uh, companies than we have Dragon Marked house businesses. House Kenneth? We've run a few of their the promotions. The ha- Full Halfling, which is run by Stoben de Galanda. You've done presentations for Morgrave University, yes, but you've also done House Galanda. You've done House Kondorak. As well as a slew of small businesses house throughout Jurasco. the House the only businesses you're pushing are ones that you're choosing. That you're... <clears throat> the, the winners and the losers. <clears throat> the ones that you're deciding, these small businesses, you're picking the winners and the losers. You're pushing business to these other people. Again, an outside force trying to tell Sharn who it is. And you aren't doing the same thing? Not at all. I'm trying to run against the corrupt politicians and give this city back to its people. I'm trying to enforce things like, I'm trying to get us back to a law-based society where we follow things like the Korth Edicts. Well, this is Breland, not on Dare, so we do, in fact, follow the Korth Edicts. Really? Mm -hmm. So there's no people here who might be tied to a Dragonmark house who have political leanings towards a nation? Well, let's not bring me into this. I've been off. Quietly, let's let's just... Uh, I will not, Mr. DeCivis. You are in bed with a clan Boromar. You've tied yourself with the people involved in the running of the city. So we have Boromars in Hold charge on, of... Hold on, one moment. Silas, you've slept with a member of House Boromar? No. Okay, I just want to make sure. Um, it, I, I apologize, my lord. You're trying to lord. obfuscate the entire issue here. He is tied to the city council... House Bormar is tied to the city council. This union between the two of this, this corrupt criminal organization, the Boromar clan, and then House Civis is disgusting. I have two questions. Yes. How long have you lived in Middle Northridge? I'm sorry. You're right. You can call into question my bona fides on whether or not I am a member of this city, as you are an outsider and not a member of this nation. Entirely, which is why I think that I and my house are uh, one of the best to uh, question all of the candidates here. And then determine who wins and loses in the city? No, that's... Pushing is- business from one tavern to another based on some principles that you decide are best? No, I think that the people should be informed of who they are uh, electing in. Now again, please, uh, my lord... How long have you lived in Middle North Edge? My campaign office has been here for a short period of time. You're absolutely right. Perhaps we should turn to someone like the Boromar clans who've been here forever. Is that what you're saying? That longevity and living in the city makes you a better citizen? No, I was simply wondering why you chose Middle North Edge instead of Lower Dura and Cliffside, since you seem so opposed to the Boromar. I chose... You chose Middle North Edge not because you actually live there or have any form of care for that particular district. So anyone living there, please be aware of that. Instead, you chose it because you feel like Doran Kantar is an easy target for you to slowly pick off. No. I chose Doran Kantar because Doran Kantar has been a corrupt politician for years and has been trying to hide behind his facade that he is a good and upstanding man. I also have other people running across the city as well. I have Gendril Nori in Upper Memphis working his hardest to take down another of your gnomish operatives, Thuric Devandi. And then we're trying to outseat all of the Boromar clan as well. We need top-down restructuring of the entire city council of Sharn. And you think that anger is the best way to go forward? Yes. Yes, I do. I think this city is tired of people telling it what to do, telling it who to be, telling us to live with other people's ideals. I, for one, am tired of living in a city like that. There are too many of us, and we need to rise up and do something about it. 
So let me go ahead and switch topics here onto something more socioeconomic. What are your thoughts on Warforged? My beliefs on Warforged are irrelevant. What matters is what the average citizen thinks about Warforged and how they are taking advantage of this city, how they are stepping in and taking jobs from hardworking citizens and how we need to do something about that. What do you feel about the uh, Treaty of Thronehold and places such as Zalargo and the Eldine Reaches becoming their own nations? I have no problems with other nations springing up and trying to make their own. I have nothing but nice things to say about most of Zalargo. I've been there. They seem like a very lovely people. Now, I have issues with the Dragonmark houses, which aren't outlined in this treaty at all. I think we need to push back on them. This entire time, you have been spewing your hateful rhetoric towards the city. You've been pushing agendas. And this entire time, House Civis has not allowed anyone else to speak on these airwaves. They have not allowed anyone else to, to present their bent on any of this. Except for you. I have tried to come back several times. The only reason you're having me back now at this moment in time is because I'm running for city council. If I was not running for city council, this seat would be full of another of your propagandists. What are you going to do? When is the Echoers going to be available for everyday citizens, not just members of House Civis? Oh, I'm sorry. Are you unable to use this thing that we made for ourselves? Does that make you angry? That you can't use something that wasn't made for you? I would like to remind you that most of the innovations that you've come up with in your collaborations with the Twelve have been integrated into cities and you've been given severe discount on all things. How about this tower no longer stands? How about then you have no place left to go and you'd have to have your little echoers in some other city? You're right. We can't do what you can do, but we can make your lives miserable because you will not represent the people of this city, Miss DeCivis. I'm sorry. Um, that's Lady DeCivis to you. Meeps, I think we're ready for the uh, outro music. I, I, I would prefer next week. Not let's let's take a week. I'm leaving. I'm done. I'm done with this. I have had enough of all of this nonsense. I can't. Uh, every time you're here, you are a bully, and it shuts me down. I do not like you, sir. You are not a pleasant person. All I want is a voice for the people of Sharn, and until you deliver that, I will make sure that every day is unbearable for all of you. Well, I hope everybody uh, can find a way to cool off after uh, this super hot week. I know that I'm currently invigorated. I hope everyone takes a second to think before they vote and keep an ear out for those echoes of hope. Yeah, no, I don't care. Let Kevin do it next week. I don't I'm done.